Hello and welcome to the last section of this course. In the previous section, we discussed the design considerations of two real-world APIs. In this section, we will learn some useful tips for building APIs in real-world scenarios. We are going to look at some important security considerations. Then, we will look at how we can deliver accurate and useful documentation. We will follow that by looking at API versioning. And finally, we will take a practical look on caching. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with security considerations. In this video, we will talk about common mistakes that developers make when building APIs. In particular, we are going to take a look at why we should use HTTPS everywhere. Then, we will look at session hijacking and how we can generate dynamic session IDs to prevent it. Finally, we will look at small measures we can take to protect our secret keys. About four years ago, Facebook had a major security issue. On the login page, Facebook was using HTTPS. So, eavesdroppers could not get users' usernames and passwords. After the users signed in, all of Facebook ran on HTTP. This was a big problem. Eavesdroppers were able to get the request headers that kept users signed in. In those days, you would have been able to go to a coffee shop with public Wi-Fi, sniff the packets, extract the request headers, and log into Facebook as any of the users who were there. This problem, which is called session hijacking, is so common that one security expert decided to build a Firefox extension that lets people sign in to services as those around them. He did that to show the world how serious the issue was. To use the extension, you download it, click Start Capturing, and double-click on people to log into their services. I encourage you to read this article to understand the solution. In short, the problem would be solved by enabling HTTPS everywhere. Let's say we do encrypt our connection with HTTPS. Is that enough security? From a man-in-the-middle perspective, it is. However, software security has to be implemented at all layers. One security issue that we had in our API involved session management. In order to lock someone in, we use the user's Twitter ID as the session ID. Since the Twitter ID is public, anyone would be able to log into our application as any other Twitter user. Even if the ID was private, it is unsafe to keep using the same session ID. To secure the API, the session ID has to be dynamically generated and stored on a session storage. To abide by the stateless property of REST, the session store can be on a different machine from the one hosting the API. In this case, if someone's session was hijacked, they only need to log out and log back in to prevent the attacker from doing more evil. The last security issue I want to talk about is probably the most important and easiest to fix, yet many people fall into it. It concerns keeping the secret keys safe. To secure the keys, we need to check two things. First, we should check that the file that contains the keys is not being served by the application. Second, we should make sure that the keys will never be saved in source control. In Git, we can do that by creating a .git ignore file. Then, we write a regular expression that matches the file name. In this video, we have learned about some of the most common security issues on the web. These tips are in no way comprehensive. I encourage everyone to go further and learn about the OWASP top 10 web security vulnerabilities.